Apple just announced the iPhone 16 in regular Plus, Pro, and Pro Max models, and there are notable updates for the most important camera system on the planet. Whether you care about image resolution, color, convenience, control, there's something new for you. Let's dive in and look at the implications for photographers. There's a major new hardware feature across all the models. We're going to chat about that first, then I'm going to get into some specifics where things differ amongst the different cameras. And be sure to stick around because I've got a free resource to help you make the best possible photos with your iPhone, whether you keep your existing phone or you're going to be upgrading to one of the new iPhone 16 models. Rumors called it the capture button, but Apple calls it camera control. It's a new button on the side of all iPhone models and it's all about photography. There's a reason why real, you know, pro camera models have got all these buttons on top. It's because we're in the heat of a photography moment. You want to focus on the scene, pun intended, and not spend all your time futzing around with software control. The camera control gets us closer to that experience with an iPhone. The iPhone 15 Pro models got the action button last year, and I was curious how it would work if Apple added yet another side button. Would it get awkward trying to quickly identify which button was which? I mean, we've got a bunch of buttons here, right? Unlike all the existing buttons, though, that protrude from the side of the iPhone, the new camera control is not raised up. It apparently sits flush with the side of the device, so it should be easy to identify with your finger. The new camera control button provides some straightforward functionality as well as advanced possibilities. A click opens the camera app, another click takes a photo, so it works just like a camera. It, but it's not just a regular press button, it's touch sensitive on the surface, and so a light tap can bring up a software interface, and then you can swipe back and forth to make adjustments within that interface. So it can be used to select a control that you want to adjust, such as zoom or the focus depth. And then within that control, swiping will perform the action, much, much like you'd rotate the button on a, on a traditional camera. Apple indicates that a software update coming later this year will allow the camera control to be used like a traditional camera shutter button with focus control. You probably learned how to focus your DSLR by doing a, a half press to focus, then you'd recompose and you'd finish the press to take the picture. The camera control is going to have something similar, a press to set focus, and then you'll be able to recompose the scene with that focus locked in. I'm looking forward to see if this is as seamless as I hope it will be. I was also pleased to see the camera control is not just limited to Apple's camera app. It can be used by third parties. In the Keynote video, they showed still photo integration with Snapchat and the Kino video app using it for a, a framing grid selection. So I look forward to having it as an additional manual control in the Halide app, and I'm sure other photo and video apps are going to be on board with it soon. Of course, they talked about Apple Intelligence, which will be releasing in December for five English-speaking markets, with more coming next year. And photographically, I'm excited about what Craig Federighi called visual intelligence. It's a capability where, using the, the new camera control button, Apple Intelligence can tell you about what your phone is looking at. So it might be the reviews of a restaurant as you're standing in front of it on the sidewalk, or it might be information about a flower in your neighbor's garden. In a nod to photographers, they also showed an example using visual intelligence to look at a scene, frame it up, and then ask ChatGPT for photographic advice about how to best capture that scene. Apple also revisited some general Apple intelligence features that were unveiled in June. I'm excited for some of the photographic possibilities, so we're going to get AI-powered search in the Photos app to find specific images without relying on keyword metadata. And that search extends within videos. In the example, they showed uh, identifying in a video where a particular person was doing a backflip. So in theory, Siri is going to get smarter with deeper integration into third-party apps. This depends both on Apple improving the language capabilities with Siri, as well as developers taking advantage of the App Intense framework, which is how they can integrate with that system level Siri action to make their applications capabilities exposed to Siri and able to be controlled by your voice. I'm cautiously optimistic. Check in with me in about six months. 
Now, everything that I've shared so far applies across the board. Let's look at a few specifics for the different iPhone models that Apple just talked about today. The regular iPhone 16 and 16 Plus are now 6.1 and 6.7 inches diagonally with stronger material and a more durable ceramic shield around them. Now, we hear this kind of thing every year, but it, it actually matters, right? We use and abuse our phones and the less that we break them, the more that we enjoy them. Unlike the Pro phones, the regular phones are available in fun colors. The, these phones get the action button now that was only on the Pro phones last year, so anyone with a new phone has got the option to configure something for quick access. I've primarily used the action button on my current phone for camera capabilities, but now with the new camera control, that opens up the action button for, for different things. The regular iPhone 16 now has a 48 megapixel fusion camera and a new 12 megapixel ultra wide lens that's going to bring macro capabilities even to the non pro phones. So new placement of these lenses side by side also means that all of the new camera models across the board can now capture spatial photo and video. The iPhone 16 gets a new A18 chip with Apple Silicon, uses 30% less power than the previous generation. Less power means more battery life, which is always a good thing. So let's talk about the Pro models. If you're serious into photography like I am, that's probably what you're interested in. They're bigger. They're now 6.3 and 6.9 inch for the Pro and the Pro Max model respectively. Apple noted that that's the biggest iPhones they've ever made. And I guess that some folks think that's a good thing. Not so much here. More on that later. Uh, the phones are available in four colors. Uh, they're in black, white, natural, and a new desert titanium color. Uh, unlike the fun colors of the regular iPhone 16, these are all pretty muted. One complaint about the 15 Pro models, and this is something I ran into, is that they got hot. I ran into it from time to time on my phone, and while Apple typically will never come right out and say that they fixed a problem, they did announce a new internal design around the chip that's expected to result in cooler phones. So I'm happy about that. The Pro and the Pro Max feature the A18 Pro chip with more speed, less power consumption, and you know optimization for the video and AI software features that are gonna shine on the device. The main camera remains at 48 megapixels, but we now get a new upgraded 48 megapixel ultra wide camera as well. That 5X pentaprism telephoto lens that was only on the Pro Max model last year now comes to the non-Max 16 Pro. And so that means that the camera capabilities between the iPhone 16 Pro and the Pro Max are identical. For me, this makes it an easy choice. I'm going to be buying the Pro, the non-Max version of the phone because I prefer that smaller size, I can save a little bit of money, and I still get the great camera system. They did spend some time in the keynote showing an upgraded photographic styles pipeline, which included creating customizations on the style and noting that those styles can now be applied after capture. Apple described it as color grading, but in real time, which I think is a fair way to categorize the feature. I did get a chuckle as they ran through some of the video features and upgraded capabilities, including 4K 120 frame per second slow motion. Um, they showed a clip where an actor was wondering, why are they in slow motion if there's explosions right behind them? Because that's how it's done. Big explosions it means slow motion. That's just how it's done. Apple once again noted that the event video was shot on the iPhone and edited on a Mac. It, it's a subtle flex, but like, has Google or Samsung produced major videos like this on their own devices? I'm, I'm asking that not in snark, but seriously, like if you know the answer to that, leave me a comment because I'd love to know. Now, to go along with the new iPhones, I've put together all of my favorite iPhone photography tips and tricks that I've learned over the last 14 years, many of which go beyond the usual things you hear everywhere. So that information is gonna drop later this week. If you wanna be the first to hear about it, hit the link in the description. It should be the first link in the description and you won't miss out. All of these new phones that Apple released start at the same price point as the previous models. 
Their often glitchy pre-order process is going to start later this week on Friday the 13th. And phones are arriving and available in the store a week later on September 20th. Uh, for existing phones, iOS 18 is going to drop next Wednesday, September 18th, uh, along with the other upgraded Apple operating systems for the Mac, Vision OS, and the like. So what do you think? Drop me a comment. Let me know how you feel about these new cameras. I mean, phones that were announced today. And if you're curious how my thoughts last year held up, you can hit a video, rewatch my comments and see how I did.